rupee depreciated by 1.4% one day in mid-August. While the global currency whirlwind took all EM currencies down in the wake of the fall of the Turkish lira. But while the lira after falling 20% has regained 12%, that is it is net down only 8% from its July levels, the rupee has not made good any of its losses of 1.4%. Clearly, the rupee fell for reasons other than just the global turmoil. It fell because the trade deficit has climbed from an average FY18 monthly uh, trade deficit of $13 billion to $18 billion in July. Post the announcement of this data, many economists have revised higher their current account deficit for the current year from around 2% to around 3% of GDP. Let's first hear out uh, former Governor Wairi Reddy on what he has made of this 3% current account deficit. In India, current account, 3% is actually, a, 2 to 3% 2 or so is NRA remittances. NRA. So in a way it's like a gift. They are sending us gift, irrespective of the exchange rate. So the current, there's a, if you adjust the current account deficit for the gift, then that shows the strength of the economy. So current account deficit plus what we received as a gift, the real current account deficit is just not three, it's five, if you take into account. So in that sense, we should be more worried uh, about the current account deficit, unless you are able to say it's temporary. The limited point, let me go back, the current account deficit for the last two years, there was a positive shock element, because the oil prices were very low. When the oil prices are very low, it is a favorable impact. So that is not the normal. So now that the positive shock is being removed, coming back to normal. If the normal is three, then definitely. So the signals are uh, required to be very careful attention to this. Okay, that's as mildly as. Uh a former governor can put it, doesn't want to scare the audience, but says that uh, uh, if under normal oil prices, our current account deficit is likely to, to touch 3%, it merits very close attention. So what should the government do? What should the RBI do about uh, these trends in trade deficit? I have with me three uh, excellent and renowned economists. Ashima Goyal, member of the Prime Minister's Economic Advisory Council, Sajid Chinoy, Chief Economist at J.P. Morgan, and Sonal Verma, Chief Economist at Nomura. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, well, first up, uh, uh, Sonal, uh, Dr. Reddy says 3% is big. And I remember in the past that the Reserve Bank has this uh, a, a kind of line in the sand that above 2.5% current account deficit, it starts worrying. Would you say it looks like a done deal? left unattended, we are going to have a 3% current account deficit this year? Uh, Lata, yeah, I mean, uh, it does look like this year we'll end up with between 25 to 3% of GDP. Uh, there have been few studies, including by staff at the Reserve Bank, on what the sustainable level of current account is given a certain growth level. Mm -hmm. And those numbers on sustainable current account deficit have been around, the estimates have been around 25% of GDP. Uh, I think the big change uh, this year clearly is the global funding environment. And whatever be our sustainable current account deficit for our growth rate, the fact is that if the global funding environment is changing, then countries need to squeeze down uh, on the extent of their current account deficit. And I think that's the situation we are in. Uh, there is a problem on the balance of payment funding. And unless we take measures to squeeze down our current account deficit, there will be uh, pressure on the currency to depreciate, which obviously has uh, other implications on the macroeconomic uh, front. Okay. Well, to some extent, uh, uh, to know what we should do to control, we would have to know what led to this. Uh, to this higher current account deficit. Uh, uh, Sajid Chinoy, you know, uh, Dr. Reddy already pointed out that we had a benign current account deficit because crude was around 50 or maybe 30 to 50 dollars uh, for uh, uh, almost from 2014 to 2016. Uh, clearly, crude is one big reason. But what would you, would you say are the wellsprings of this jump in trade deficit and hence in current account? 
Now, that's important to understand that the current account problem is not one of last month or last quarter. We've been saying this for a while, and Dr. Reddy alluded to this. To understand what the underlying current account is, to, is to, is to, you've got to strip away oil and gold. And if you do that, what you find is a very worrying trend that the current account surplus that India runs, X oil and gold, is actually deteriorated by almost 3% of GDP over the last three years. So there's been a, a secular uh, deterioration in these external imbalances. Those were masked by very low oil prices. So the minute oil prices jump back to any degree of normalcy, you're seeing the headline number jump up. Now, why is this happening? It's happening because exports have underperformed uh, the global economy, even accounting for this deglobalization. And the, f the fact that imports have been unduly strong, uh, despite the fact that India's growth differential with the rest of the world has narrowed. So we're seeing this on both sides of the ledger. You know, classical economic theory would suggest this requires expenditure switching. We need to have a real depreciation of the currency to boost export competitiveness, to uh, make imports more expensive and therefore boost import competing, uh, competing sectors. And what we found is in, in, in empirical work recently that the elasticity of exports to the exchange rate is much higher than previously presumed. So two points I'll make. One is this underlying worsening of the current account has been a work in progress for the last four years. It's not a two-month phenomenon. And secondly, India will require some degree of expenditure switching, which is some real depreciation of the currency uh, to, to compress these uh, imbalances. And I think currently the policies that the, that the central bank and government is following is actually a very sound one to get a gradual calibrated depreciation of India's uh, exchange rate. Uh, so very quickly, what you're saying is that uh, uh, yes, there has been a, a, a reduction or a deterioration of our export performance, but you're also saying that there has been a, a, a currency overvaluation. Uh, is the RER uh, overvaluation of the currency a big problem, Sajid? Well, you know, I'm going to avoid using the word overvaluation because this is an art more than a science. What I will say is between 2014 and end 2017, the real effective exchange rate, the broad uh, index, appreciated 20%. And that was concurrent with the fact that the underlying current account was worsening. So our, our presumption is that that did have some role to play. Uh, and, 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 and so far in 2018, and, and in a way, you know, this is not the fault of policy. When India got this large positive terms of trade shock from oil, this is an inevitable outcome. When you get these large windfalls, the, the equilibrium outcome is the real effective exchange rate should appreciate, and it did. Now the shoe is on the other foot. Oil prices have gone up. There'll be pressures on the equilibrium real exchange rate to depreciate. And so far, at least in the first six months of the year, policymakers have and should accommodate this depreciation. So we've seen a 6% depreciation, but that has not still offset the 20% appreciation of the last four years. Fair point. Uh, well, uh, actually, it's not just the pleasant, uh, the positive uh, uh, terms of freight shock because of oil. We also had an extraordinarily strong uh, and stable political environment, probably for the first time in 26 years, and that also drew in a lot of capital uh, uh, surpluses capital into the country, which perhaps created this appreciation. Well, you know, Sajid and Sonal represent the market to me, and Ashima represents the academic and the policymaker in a sense, because uh, you're in a way an arm of government, uh, Ashima, member of the Prime Minister's Economic Advisory Council. So do you think the government recognizes that we have a macroeconomic problem if the current account deficit is heading to 3%? Is that a recognized problem? Well, Lata, I want to start by saying that I do not uh, represent the Economic Advisory Council. Okay. It doesn't have a view and I, on this issue. And whatever I say will be my personal view. As an, as an academic. academic. Okay. So I don't know what, uh, you know, if... Um, <laughs> yes, yes. So I think that there is a problem, but it is largely due to the huge sort of uh, large foreign inflows we saw last year because our interest rates were much higher than international in a regime of quantitative easing. So in a way, if this year we see some less inflows, it's not a problem per se. It, was, it will help an adjustment of the real exchange rate in the desired direction to stimulate exports. And, and uh, therefore, as you said in the beginning, it's a, it's a required adjustment. And the Reserve Bank is making sure it happens without too much volatility. Which is, which is also required. 
But apart from what Sonal and Sajid say, I would like to point out that there are other factors affecting exports. The real exchange rate is not the only one. And last year, we had the GST, which particularly hit small firms. The last two months, we are seeing some turnaround in this, in export growth, which will help improve the current account deficit. Some real uh, depreciation will also help those exports that have compete on very thin margins. And at the same time, some supply side improvements will also help. So, so therefore, other kinds of adjustments are also taking place. It's dangerous to on, talk only about a real depreciation because we are largely dependent on you know, a huge amount of imported intermediate, especially oil. So that can itself be inflationary and raise costs. And I had done some work where um, because of, you know, you can't just follow purchasing power parity, which says the rupee should, should uh, depreciate to compensate for inflation differentials. You also have productivity changes, improve, ch a rise in wage rates, etc. So looking at all this, I think that that 20% depreciation we don't need to make up already 6%, and we are at a level at which export rate growth was very healthy in 2011, the current real exchange rate after this correction. So if the rupee stays in a narrow, in a band of, say, 69 to 71, that's, that's all right to balance between the interests of exporters and importers, you know, to reduce inflationary pressures, to mo moderate our oil import bill. Well, fair enough. I, I mean, I, I take a point. I don't think even uh, Sajid intended uh, to say that it was only uh, the rupee appreciation or its uh, overvaluation, if you please, uh, for want of a better word, that uh, created this uh, problem. It is one of the reasons, perhaps, why uh, the trade deficit uh, uh, is where it is and the current account looms as a problem. Uh, we have to take a break. But... Uh, all of you have already pointed out to some suggestions in terms of uh, how we have to overcome this current account deficit issue. Uh, suggestions to how we control the current account deficit in a minute after this break.